Well, right. good afternoon, everybody. Uh, today, just uh, announcing uh, the success of uh, Q Blitz, which has been carrying on throughout the whole of the state for particularly the last two weeks. We've got another two weeks of this operation going, and it's been a significant, uh, successful operation in which we've had over 8,000 police hours put towards this successful operation and over 10,000 uh, traffic offence uh, notices issued to drivers ranging from high range speeding to seat belts to uh, fatigue through, uh, through uh, mobile uh, uh, operations of, of their phones within uh, their vehicles. But it's here to send a clear message also that traffic is the responsibility of all Queenslanders. Police are out on the streets, they're enforcing it, they can only do so much. And I do call on all Queenslanders to stand up, take responsibility, look after themselves, but also their loved ones in their vehicles. And if you see someone who is doing the inappropriate thing within a vehicle, please tell those people to actually change their behaviour, because they're not just putting their lives at risk, they're putting other people's lives at risk in that vehicle, other members of the community, and the emergency service workers that have to attend and clean up this mess at the end of the day. So uh, this blitz has gone on for the last two weeks. It's uh, been very proactive, and it's going to continue right up to uh, when the, uh, the normal holiday and, uh, and Christmas blitz start. And uh, for the technical side of it and more detail, I'll just pass to the Commissioner. Thanks, Minister. Certainly, uh, this was action we decided to take to, to check whether people are receiving the message about road safety. And, and the clear answer is they're not. Uh, because 10,000 traffic inf infringements um, or arrests for uh, drink driving and drug driving um, have resulted in, in this enforcement action. Um, we decided to go very public with this now because we don't want any more lives lost this year. Um, we've, we've had a very, very uh, bad year in terms of uh, fatalities on our roads and the only way we'll ever stop this is people to start taking responsibility themselves. Disappointed are you then with drivers in general? Look, we're very disappointed, and uh, we basically uh, uh, did a soft launch of Cublets, meaning that we just got our officers out there doing the extra enforcement. And this enforcement is over and above our normal enforcement. So this 8,000 8, extra hours over the last couple of weeks has certainly been um, targeted on, on road safety and enforcement activities. And to find that um, we've got this level of non-compliance with the road rules, it's it's pretty shocking. And we had over, sorry, we just had over, you know, at, to date, there's 248 Queenslanders have lost their lives on the road, and that is uh, slightly up 17 on last year. And the loss of any life is unacceptable, but uh, we need to implore that all Queenslanders have to take responsibility. Queensland Police are out there, we're doing special operations, we're enforcing the Traffic Act, but we've got to make sure that Queenslanders take responsibility in their own actions on the road. Are you surprised by the basic nature of some <coughs> of these offences, like not wearing a seatbelt, for instance? Um, it defies logic that people still will drive a vehicle and not wear a seatbelt. It really does. And we know how dangerous that is because often in fatalities, the fatality is linked to uh, exactly that, people being unrestrained in the motor vehicle. It's a really simple thing. <coughs> it's been around a long time. And we will take our, our action to uh, enforce those rules. Uh, are you also looking at um, distractions such as, you know, mobile phones, that sort of thing? Um, we are, and the numbers uh, are relatively small, about, um, about 300 or, sorry, about 2,500 over the last two weeks. But again, it is an offence that we're very concerned about, it, those inattention type offences that can, can also uh, include fatigue. Um, we are very, very worried about those. Would you consider making it a fatal five to include that um, development of... Well, they're the type of things we're looking at presently to either uh, increase and put inattention in with fatigue to maintain the fatal four or increase it to a separate offence because we've had an increase in the mobile uh, phone uh, type of offences, particularly during this operation for the last two weeks. So whether we extend it to the fatal five or the fatal four, the rebadging and naming is, uh, is fantastic, but at the end of the day, Queenslanders have to stop offending and committing these type of traffic offences because you can only see, from the, particularly from the statistics of the last two weeks, we've had done over 30,000 RBT testings. There's still the amount, you know, people haven't learnt the message about 
drug and alcohol taking, drink driving and drug taking in the operation of the vehicle. And uh, you know, we really have to send a clear message to all Queenslanders <coughs> that you can't drink and drive, <coughs> you can't take drugs, but also in relation to phone usage is you have a responsibility. It's, it's, it's a privilege to have a licence. It's not a right. And when you're out on the road, you have to obey those rules for the sake of all of the community. And particularly where we've seen this increase of, of mobile uh, phone usage activities, we will be looking at uh, other ways of either extending it to a fatal five or include it in the attention. But we're getting those statistics back to see uh, if, if, how we can make it simpler to get that message out, which is so important. Example of offences, Commissioner, um, that have just left you, you know, gobsmacked. Um, excuse me. I, I'm still <coughs> gobsmacked by the high range uh, speeding offences that occur. Now I don't have the specifics with me, but I do know that we've had a couple of quite high speeds um, uh, caught by our mobile radars and also uh, also the tr the camera detected offences. <coughs> um, it justifies logic that people would be behaving this way. And the worst part about this is this is the month before Christmas, yeah. um, a time where we want everyone to be safe right throughout the year, but, a, but particularly at that Christmas time. Um, and to see this level of, of non-compliance is really quite shocking. Well, is that the motivation by doing this, getting the big stick out now so people might behave better over Christmas? It, it was part of it, but it was also to test whether people are taking notice of the, uh, the advertising, the road safety messages that go out every day. Um, and it's about high visibility policing, trying to get um, greater visibility of the police on the roads so people will obey the rules. But what, what this is demonstrating is that we still have those in the community who have no regard for their own safety and the safety of others. Can we, sorry, sorry, is that suggesting that the traditional uh, methods of advertising then aren't getting through? Uh, what this suggests to me is we are really going to have to increase our enforcement capacity and our focus on road safety and, and people will have to suffer the consequences because it, it appears that other methods uh, are having little effect. And how do you propose to increase your enforcement capacity? Uh, simply by refocusing some of our effort, um, focusing back on the front line, getting more people on the front line to do this sort of work. Do you need more money to do that though? Or? No. Um, Part of our uh, current review of the organisation and our restructure that um, I'll be talking to the government about shortly will uh, will free up even more officers back to the front line and uh, that'll be right across the state. And one of the areas that I'm, I'm vitally interested in is making the community safer. It's part of the mantra that I've been preaching since I became the Commissioner. Commissioner, over the years I'm sure you've, you've had that dreadful experience of having to do a death knock. I mean, what's your strongest message to people? Because maybe they just don't get it that this is about life and death. I mean, that's, that's what you're really ultimately saying, whether it's your family that's affected or, or a stranger. The, the really sad part about this, though, is that there are those in the community who never think it's going to happen to them. Mm. And what they've got to wake up to that's is right, that, yeah. that it may, um, that this is about family and friend. This is about brothers, sisters, mothers, fathers. Um, and it's time people just woke up. Mm. In the last couple of years, you've achieved um, you know, a road toll of under 300. Are you confident that you'll be able to maintain that? Look, um, as the Minister rightly said, we're plus 17 at right at this moment. Uh, that will still bring us under if we don't have a surge. Um, but that's not the point. One death is one death too mm. many. And I'd rather it be zero. Um, I'd rather it be plus nothing. Uh, because, uh, unfortunately, the, um, the cost to the community, the, tra the <coughs> tragedy of a death on the road... Um, the sudden, suddenness with which it occurs, people no, never being able to say goodbye. Um, it is too high a price and it's easily fixed. It's easily fixed by people obeying the rules. So is it the message you want to give today is that if it, you're doing something wrong on the roads, you'll be caught? Absolutely. That's and right. And it's a clear indication for the deaths on the road are, are particularly linked to these type of offenders that are committing traffic offences. So, you know, it's, it's, it's not rocket science when we say don't speed, don't drink and drive, wear your seatbelt. If you're tired, don't drive. It's very important that we, that we take our driving responsibility serious. The police are going to take it serious. The government are taking it serious. 
in relation to obviously cutting down that red tape and so forth, we've got the introduction of Hoon legislation that will be going through to Parliament shortly. That will actually reduce, uh, it's anticipated the reduction in police hours is, is over 30,000 police hours just in the Hoon by redoing the, the, uh, the Hoon legislation. So that will then give police officers more ta time to be out on a, on a proactive on, on the front line and, and more so than they're involved in, uh, in doing paperwork and, uh, and sitting behind desks. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Are they more up to date, the ones that you mentioned about 10,000 and you mentioned the figure of 10,000 years is more than 6,000? That's, that's correct, yeah. Yeah, because we've got two, two weeks. weeks' worth now yeah. of data. Yeah. Um, just a question on a separate subject. Yeah. Um, <coughs> do you think that police need more protections to engage in, in pursuit? From, from, a government, from a government side of it, uh, it was uh, way before the, uh, even before the last uh, election, we identified that there would be issues in relation to, to police pursuits and uh, from the feedback we're getting from the community is that the lack of, um, of, of penalties that uh, offenders were uh, being uh, recipitated with in, in the court process. So that's why we've, we've introduced the evade police powers uh, in relation to five and five and a half thousand dollar penalties and loss of license for two years, and we've seen that successfully uh, gone through the courts in uh, in the Fraser Coast and uh, in the Caboolture District recently, where people uh, copped the six thousand dollar fine and loss of license two years. So it sends a, a great deterrent. But we're going to reinforce that deterrent with the changes of the Hooning legislation as well to make evade police a confiscation of a vehicle. So if you participate in uh, any speed trials, dangerous driving, serious offences in relation to Hooning, your car will be confiscated for 90 days, taken off the road. And if you commit another offence in five years, your vehicle will be either confiscated or crushed. Now, what that does from the academic side of uh, uh, of, the, of the pursuits and the information that we've got worldwide is that you need stronger penalties to, to, to send a message to people to stop and think before participating in a police pursuit. Because at the end of the day is uh, that no theft of a property is worth a person's life. And uh, we can all think that uh, we can you know, talk tough in relation to police pursuits. But when it comes back to a loved one, a, a, a police officer, a member of the community, or even uh, someone that's been offended that loses their life, it, it's too late to look back in hindsight and say we could have done or we should have done. And, but we're working with the best evidence uh, from, from a worldwide base to make sure that uh, we send a clear message. We're looking at other states as well with uh, obviously what's happening in, in the WA and so forth and, and I'll certainly be working and getting advice from the, the, uh, the Commissioner in relation to uh, how we'll look at it in the, in the uh, first part of, of next year as well if there is things that we need to, uh, to slightly change. I'll, I'll, yeah, yeah. I'm specifically talking about officers themselves rather yep. than the Perpetrators, do you, do you think there should be more legal protection from officers for causing property damage or uh, injuring sort of people on the? It's, it's an interesting conundrum because at the end of the day, um, engaging in urgent duty driving is about balancing the risk. We don't have a, a non-pursuit policy in this state. What we have is a pursuit policy which under certain circumstances allows our officers to take uh, action to drive in a way which is urgent. Um, to follow an offender or to try and cut off an offender who may be about to commit a very, very serious offence on known knowledge. That's the leeway that we allow our officers. But to pursue people for minor traffic offences, for a stolen car, that's not worth the risk and that's what we preach to our officers. Um, certainly there, is, uh, there are <coughs> issues about, um, about liability legislation. I'm not sure how that would work. I'm not a lawyer. But certainly uh, we will undertake a review of our, pursuit, our current pursuit policy because we want to see how the new mandatory uh, legislation uh, will affect the outcomes of, of the uh, ability for people to uh, run from police, whether that will have a, an effect or whether we will go back to government and ask for uh, adjustments and perhaps even further um, deterrent legislation. 
uh, that may be available. We've also had two successful cases just on the Gold Coast recently where people have tried to pursue from police and have actually been located by the police helicopter. Mm -hmm. So as the rollout of the new police helicopters comes into line for two for the South East Queensland, plus coupled with the advances what uh, the Commissioner is very passionate about in relation to the technology side of it, we'll be able to then identify offenders and then follow that ac action up. We've basically been able to task force certain areas to saturate them in relation to a police response over particular offenders that are uh, that are stubbing the nose at uh, at police, and so we'll be able to have the resources because but by reducing the red tape and paperwork they do across the board, we'll actually have not just you know the 1,100 new police that we're bringing forward, but the police officers themselves will be freed up from a considerable amount of paperwork uh, that they're currently doing. Uh, one final question, just on schoolies, I understand. Yeah. I think you, you did. Speak. <coughs> last night, Minister. Um, with these photos this morning that we saw of a, a young man sort of having a nap on a balcony ledge, do you, do you think enough's being done to get the message across to young school leavers to, um, to, to be safe? And yeah, well, well, the simple message for the whole of school is, is stay safe and look after your mates. And obviously this person's mates let him down. Now, uh, you can have this occurrence happening in any regional town or centre, you know, whether it be on a Friday or a Saturday night anywhere in Queensland. You know, from the tens of thousands of schoolies that attended schoolies, and from what I saw there last night, I was very proud of the way that the schoolies behaved in consideration of having over 10,000 young people together celebrating their graduation. You know, and, uh, and I've said before, whether it be what you learn in the sand pit at school, at preschool, or whether on the sands of the beach of the surface paradise, it's quite simple, is you have respect for other people, you uh, make sure that uh, you use your please and thank yous, and you, and you bring forward the same values of looking after your mate. Now that starts at prep, and it goes right through to schoolies, and you know what, that continues even when through us as adults as well, to make sure we look after each other. So I'm sure that the family of that young man are very relieved, and uh, I'm sure that his mates understand that they probably should have taken a fair bit of care, because from a government and police perspective, Queensland Ambulance perspective, Queensland Fire and Rescue Services, this event, I believe, for it was run for over two weeks, is doing remarkably well. You know, 345 extra police officers, 16 uh, Queensland Ambulance Service officers, 18 SES officers, hundreds of volunteers mm. uh, in line, num a numer of numerous uh, uh, security providers, coupled with the interaction of the whole schoolies committee that works in with the with the uh, the resort operators, the motel operations, to make sure that uh, it's a network. And what I found very pleasing was that the schoolies were taking ownership of their own schoolies. They didn't want the toolies there. They didn't want the, uh, the aggressiveness. They wanted to be able to have a celebration for the 12 years of hard work that they've put in. And, you know, that's a side of the schoolies that we don't see, uh, you know, out, out through the rest of the state. But I'd just say great credit to the organisers, the emergency service workers, the volunteers, and great credit to the schoolies themselves. And uh, I wish them the best over the next two weeks. I know it'll be, uh, it'll be hard on them, but uh, it's, uh, it's certainly uh, is, is, uh, is pleasing to see that these type of events uh, are run smoothly.